Hey there viewers, welcome back to Ray of All Trades. Today we're working on the Husqvarna Z254. Getting a little bit cold outside, so it's getting a little bit crowded in the shop. I even had to park my tow vehicle up inside here. This thing came in as a no crank, no start. They said it was running just fine. They parked it. When they went to turn the key the next time, it just gets a chunk noise. Fairly confident we're looking at an electrical problem. Battery could be dead now, but let's just take a quick peek. Chokes out. Safety levers are off. I don't even have a chunk or anything right now. Let's put a jump pack on the battery and see what changes. So what's funny, I haven't even put the negative side on yet. I put the positive cable on and it's I think I hear the uh, fuel solenoid clicking. So it's very possible I've got a bad connection on the battery, um, which would be odd because like I said, I had a jumper cable hooked up to it when I was out in the field, trying to see what's going on. So here's a jump pack. Let's see what we get. Bring you in for a closer look. So I'm just hooked up to the battery positive and negative. Let's see what. You know what's cool is I saw a couple of sparks down in here when I was doing that just now. Kind of curious if I've just literally just got a bad cable. I saw sparks that time too. Let's go right onto the cable and see if that makes a difference. Yep. So all that was was a uh, bad connection right here on the cable. So that was kind of an uneventful one. I'll clean up that cable real quick, but not sure if you guys were able to hear that or not. Um, let's turn this key off, jump box out of the way. So I'm guessing that the hot key will probably just has a really bad connection. But basically this hot connection right here, I can get it to turn just a little bit. Anyway, I'll redo that connector, get this battery on. Well, I, I think it needs to be on charge. Safety's out. Okay, well, battery doesn't need to be charged. All I gotta do is fix that connector. The reason why I went to go look at this thing originally was the muffler. I bought a brand new muffler for this thing. I don't know if the video gives it any kind of justice as to what's going on, but this muffler is in terrible shape. Basically, it's completely destroyed and it's super loud. It does more than just cause an annoying sound when you're doing that. You'll actually burn valves if you let it run that way too long. I'm just going to do, uh, uh, take some of this strapping that's been put on and whatnot, get that uh, muffler changed out. Let me get this back cover off of here, get these straps out of the way, and uh, let's see what it is. It should just be take out two bolts and swap the muffler. Let's give it a try. See, looks like three half inch bolts. Pull that cover off. Let's get a better look at what's going on here. Let's take these straps off that somebody had attempted to hold the muffler up with. Wow. Yeah, that muffler's definitely seen better days. Um, we've got a brand new one to put in its place. Make sure the holes line up. They appear to. Let me get a wrench on these. Let's see, did it break? Yep, it broke. All right, so I'll find another one of these bolts that'll thread in there. What do y'all think? 
I bet you there's a couple of viewers out there that can weld this back together. I'm going the cheap route. I'm just throwing a brand new one on. These threads aren't tapped. The idea is that you're supposed to just run the new bolt in and it'll uh, create its, its own threads. I'm gonna see if this will slide in there. If not, I'm gonna have to loosen up these two to let this uh, carriage drop a little bit. It drops right up in there. Good snug fit. Exhaust porch right there. Where was the other one? The other one came out this side. So it's got plenty of exhaust space over there. Let me go find another one of these bolts, or at least a couple of them. And I'm either going to thread that in, can't do it on the bench. Um, this plate is uh, bolted up to the frame. So it'd actually be easier for me to drive this uh, bolt in its place. Give me just a second, let me look through my stash. All right, I looked through my stash, I find a couple of bolts that look like they're gonna fit. When you're tapping into a fresh metal like that, there's a couple things you can do. You can run a tap through it, you can just get a, an impact, you can just give a whole lot of pressure and push and everything else. I always found out that it's easier if you cut a relief in here on the both of them, and that'll help start those threads. I'm gonna take a hacksaw, put these in the bench real quick, and I'm gonna cut a relief into both of these, and let me show you what that looks like. That'll help start them, because basically it's cutting those new threads, similar to what a tap does. So you can just take a bolt, do the exact same thing. If it doesn't wanna thread in there, I tried both of these, they're actually really close. Um, if it doesn't wanna thread in there, you could also take a grinder and shave down this, you know, put a cone on the very end of it if you needed to. So just little shortcuts to, uh, make something happen if you didn't want to try to run a tap through there. A lot of these bolts that are on this thing are made for that. They will cut threads when they're going in. But when you have bolts that aren't made for that, like I said, just cut a little relief cut in there. Let me show you what it looks like. And there we go, just like that. Just cut a couple of uh, relief cuts inside it. Made it similar to a, like a tap. So not much, but I mean the threads are gonna be way up here. You know, I mean, this is just for cutting. Throw a little bit of a WD on these things. This one doesn't want to line up as well. I mean, it's off by an eighth of an inch, something like that. So we'll just get that in line. Get one of these started. Get this battery connection replaced. <laughs> like that. No wrench required. Yep, lots of arcing on this side. That's actually, a, uh, the metal's actually in fairly good shape other than being arced and corroded and whatnot. So I'll tell you what, I'm just gonna take a wire brush and clean this up. Where there's one bad, I'm sure there's two. Okay, I'm gonna hook up the positive first because there's more chance of me hitting the frame as I'm tightening this and grounding out than there is of me hitting the other negative battery post. If I hit the frame and it's grounded already, then I'm gonna have sparks and everything else. But if I'm not hooked up, then the only thing I have to worry about hitting is the negative on the battery itself as I'm tightening this up. 
hopefully that makes some, makes sense because like you can see I'm I'm tightening the, the the positive and I'm touching the frame and there's no sparks right but on the contrary if I had the negative hooked up first when I did that same thing and I touched the frame then I would have completed a circuit and it would have sparked for whatever it's worth hopefully that helps some of y'all now I can drop my brush no and now I can tighten up this other side and not have to worry about touching the frame because I'm now on the ground side of the battery. I'm going to vacuum and a uh, some compressed air and clean this thing up because that thing's in pretty rough shape. I'm fairly confident I do not have one of these filters. Let me just try to blow this out for now and get one ordered. Try this thing out and see if this needs anything else. Okay, not happy with it. A lot better than what it was. Let's see if it needs anything else. We'll give it a try. See if she fires up. Oh, that test, the test crank I did must have been this last hurrah. Well, she drives okay, cuts okay, but the adjustment is not right. So what I noticed is this position right here is the neutral position, but that does not line up with the slot to drop it in here, which is further back here. Back here, it's actually pulling backwards. So let's see if we can get the drive alignment done. Okay, so coming in, this has a pin right there. So I'm gonna pull that pin out. Okay. Okay, that's the keeper that keeps it in place. What I'm gonna do is take it back out real quick. So this handle was basically in neutral right about there, okay? So what I want to do, if you notice, when I go back to neutral, that moves that rod closer in, right? So that's neutral, but I want this to be able to lock in right there, right? So I need that to come backwards for it to be in neutral. I need it to be about there to be in neutral, okay? So all I'm going to do is tighten this up. Long way. Tighten it up a little bit. I'm gonna realign, and I have no idea if I'm all the way there or not, but I'm gonna realign the pinhole so I can put it back in place, okay? And lock it back in. 
So I'm gonna do that a couple times until it's sitting in neutral like I want it to, but that's the drive adjust. If you have a way of, of setting this up, you can do that while it's you know running and see what you got. I'm just gonna try that a couple times and see how close I am, and then turn it a couple turns in and out. So basically I've tightened it to bring the handle uh, to rest in that position right there. So I'm gonna try to fire it up and see what happens. Truthfully, when I fire it up, if it doesn't try to move, then I know I've got it. All right, second time's a charm, I guess. I ended up, I either went too far or went the wrong direction. So it took me a couple tries. Let me put the pin back in. Truthfully, I think I went the wrong direction because it looks like I'm ex I exposed some threads that I hadn't exposed before. Got the pin back in. I ended up jacking up the back end of it so that I could have the wheels off the ground when I was doing it because I ended up having to adjust it a few times. Let me clear all my junk out the way and uh, give this thing a try. That's it, Husqvarna Z254, a drive adjust, a no start, and new muffler. So I hope you guys got something out of it. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys on the next one.